If you ever find yourself wanting to type or good luck say out loud, well as a white heterosexual male, I'm gonna steal a phrase from Mike Falzone and hey, shh, don't. Privilege is like a mule with a spinning wheel. Nobody knows how they got it and dang it if they know how to use it. Man, remember when The Simpsons was good? There's a violent anger that gushes forth when the topic of privilege comes up. People feel attacked and understand it to mean sometimes that all white men are awful people and should feel bad all the time. Really, it's about awareness. It needs to be understood that people of different ethnicities, sexual orientations, genders, face all the same hardships you do and also have to combat against sexism, racism, bigotry, or anything else about themselves that they cannot change. Let's take racism as a very specific example. There is overt racism and hidden racism. If I start shouting the n-word about, yes, that is very obviously racist. Unless the n-word is starting the sentence, nice slacks, gentlemen because apparently I grew up in the 1920s. But in many ways, the more insidious type of racism is the type that's hidden. There was a study that was conducted where the same resumes were sent out to businesses with the only thing changed was the name on the top of them. More black sounding names like Jamal needed to send out 50% more resumes to receive one callback as opposed to more white sounding names like Greg Baker. By the way, I've seen Greg's job performance and it is quite subpar. I said gravy on the side, Greg. On the side, privilege does not mean you've had an easy life, but it does mean you don't have to worry about certain things. Take for instance, the gays. In some states in America, you can technically legally be fired if you're open about being gay. Trans people have it even worse. Do you have a sort of judgment hanging above you waiting to fall if you talk about the person you love? Feminism also appears to have been turned into a dirty word recently. Quite wrongly, it's believed that in order to be a feminist, you need to hate men. In reality, you don't need to be a feminist, you just need to have eyes and or ears. That's a joke, but I'll give you one example of why feminism is still needed. Look at movies. Representation is powerful, and I'll do a more in-depth video about that in the future. But in 2014, 30% of all speaking roles were women. Which is kind of weird, like super weird, when you consider that 51% of the population is female unless during that census, 20% of those women were Mrs. Butterworth. And I'm not saying that we need some type of quota to fill, but realizing that women, different ethnicities, different sexual orientations are not represented in the media in an honest way is the first step in fixing the problem. And hey, there can be overzealous people pushing for equality. Take the recent protests that happened at Bernie Sanders' rally in Seattle. Here's a guy whose family was shaped by the Holocaust. I think he understands why every life matters. Recognizing that your skin color and sexual preference affords you a level of security not had by many other people does not invalidate your successes. Understanding that the world is essentially catered to white males 18 to 49. And understanding that is the first step in breaking down those barriers and making you a more empathetic person. Become an agent of change or else the world leaves you in the dust and you have nothing to comfort yourself but the tears of your own hatred. Which is like the worst way to spend a Friday night. My name is Kyle, I upload videos every Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. Last week's video is over yonder. If you wanna make sure you never miss a video, you can also subscribe down below as well. In the description, you will see links to all of my social media so that you can find out all the things I'm doing when it's not Thursday. It's mostly very sad. In the, in the comments down below, I'd love to hear from you on what your thoughts are on this week's topic. It would be my privilege to hear from you. That's yeah, a tie-in and shut up, Kyle.